Topical anesthesia can be regarded as the ultimate form of a low-risk, non-invasive technique for phaco anesthesia. It can be used for all types of phaco incisions, and some surgeons happily use it for all types of cataract. But in the end, it's down to personal choice, and most of us choose to use it selectively. The technique as such couldn't be simpler. And in fact, you've just seen it from start to finish. You should use preservative-free anaesthetic agents. Proximetocaine, bupivacaine and binoxinate are all popular. Avoid putting the drops directly onto the cornea to reduce the chances of epithelial toxicity. Apply a few drops either around the cornea or into the fornix and give them a minute to take effect, and that's it. The technique is simplicity itself and has very little to do with the success of the surgery. Surgical success depends greatly upon three other issues. Preparation of the patient, careful patient selection, and preparation of the surgeon. Patient preparation means appropriate preoperative counselling. There are four specific issues that it's helpful to warn patients about beforehand. Firstly, the microscope light will seem very bright to begin with, but generally doesn't cause any problems. Secondly, it's normal to feel sensations around the eyelids throughout the procedure. Thirdly, the surgeon will ask them during the operation to move their eyes and hold their gaze in certain directions, and it's helpful if they can do so. And lastly, it's normal to occasionally feel a sensation of pressure inside the eye during surgery. Patients are much more relaxed if they know what to expect, so forewarned is forearmed. Now on to patient selection. When you start off using topical anesthesia, careful case selection is important. So how can you pick the winners? Well, here are four suggestions. Firstly, if there's a language barrier, then don't use topical. Clear communication is needed, and they'll be unable to reliably cooperate with you during surgery. Secondly, choose the easier eyes. You want well-dilated pupils, normal depth chambers, and early cataracts. Thirdly, take a look at their squeeze response. An individual's reaction to applanation tonometry or anaesthetic drop installation can be a useful predictor of their reactivity during surgery. This can be helpful for you early on in excluding unsuitable cases. And fourthly, before you start the surgery, just check when they're on the table that they clearly understand how to move their eyes around when you ask them to. This combination of preoperative counselling and careful case selection early on will maximise your chances of success and minimise the stress factor on both sides. Now to finish with, let's look at the preparation of the surgeon. The surgeon needs to be aware of three specific intraoperative issues. Eye movement control, the intact sensation of periocular tissues, and the sensitivity of the iris to surgical trauma. Let's look at them in order. Firstly, eye movements. Although saccadic eye movements can look disconcerting, they can be readily overcome during critical manoeuvres like the rexis by immobilising the eye with forceps. In contrast, sudden and more forceful gaze movements can cause problems. You can minimise significant eye movements by engaging the patient's cooperation at the beginning of surgery as mentioned. They can then place their eye in the preferred position for you. This turns the presence of voluntary eye movements to positive advantage. Secondly, the intact sensation of periocular tissues. This is something you have to remain aware of because inadvertent traction on the speculum or stimulation of the lids can trigger a forceful squeeze or sudden head movement. This can also happen in response to a subconjunctival injection at the end of surgery, so beware. Thirdly, the sensitivity of the iris. Because the iris retains its normal sensitivity during topical anaesthesia, stretching it or phacoing it is painful and will cause sudden head movements. Many surgeons give intracameral 1% unpreserved lidocaine to counteract this. It stings slightly as it goes in, but it's otherwise well tolerated. It's worth using routinely to begin with to expand the surgical safety margin. Finally, a word of caution about using intravenous sedation with topical anaesthesia. Most of the time it works very well. However, because of the retained sensation inside and around the eye, 
you can occasionally get sudden and dysphoric responses to inadvertent stimulation of these tissues. It is unusual, but it happens, and you need to be aware of it. So hopefully, this video has given you an appreciation of the important issues that surround topical anesthesia and form the foundations for successful surgery. If you take them on board, then you'll not only improve your confidence, but also maximize your chances of success and hopefully start to enjoy using topical anesthesia for phaco surgery.